Today I'll be presenting mechanizing refinement types, and this paper is joint work with Nikki Vazu from India and Ranjit Jala from UC San Diego. In case you, you're not aware of refinement types, we'll talk about these briefly. And this is a type system that can represent uh, various sets of values. The domain will be a type in our underlying system, and these will be constrained by some kind of arbitrary predicate. These predicates or refinements are Boolean expressions. And the typical applications of refinement type systems are to prevent runtime errors at compile time, like array out of bounds, and to also be a lightweight verifier for functional correctness. The motivation of our project was that practical refinement types, the engineering of these, has gotten way ahead of the meta-theoretical foundations, and existing formalisms don't capture the essence of refinement types. The essential features of practical refinement systems that real systems show and we're interested in are both, first, semantic subtyping without writing casts so that the system can check subtyping obligations at function calls without the programmer having to write explicit casts and parametric polymorphism as well. Now, existing calculi that have been published that have soundness proofs uh, don't fully combine the essential features of practical refinement types. Uh, some systems don't have polymorphism. For instance, Flanagan's 2006 system. Others don't have semantic subtyping and have uh, syntactic subtyping, casts, or other replacements. For example, uh, system FR. Uh, Sekiyama 2017, and uh, Sekiyama 2017 also noted that some published systems have a problematic meta-theory meta that resulted from various workarounds. But in this paper, our contribution is to introduce a calculus, we call this Lambda RF, that combines semantic subtyping with parametric polymorphism, and we've also supplied for a meta-theory uh, two fully mechanized proofs, one in Koch and one in Liquid Haskell. Now, what makes these refinement types useful? We'll talk about our implementation of our system RF and these main features. Semantic subtyping is important because programmers want to avoid writing explicit casts. It makes the system much more useful. And the checks that arise for function calls, these can be turned into semantic checks and passed off automatically, for instance, to an SMT solver. And if we have polymorphism, then refinements can propagate throughout the system. I think of theorems for free, and that gives us a lot of benefit. So the outline for the rest of the talk, now that we've talked about the useful features of refinement type systems, we'll talk about three challenges that arose formalizing our meta-theory, the solutions to each of these challenges, and then I'll talk about our mechanization and the lessons we learned there. So in brief, the three challenges are that when formalizing implicit semantic subtyping, we ran into circularities in the judgments of our system, and we'll talk about why it's important to avoid those, and we'll also talk about the challenges that arose in modeling our logical implications. And finally, with polymorphism, we'll talk about challenges around instantiating type variables soundly and how this arises in our kind of system. I'll provide a running example through this talk, and that will be if we implement arrays as functions. And so here, an array will simply be a function from a range of the natural numbers into whatever type is contained. And we have the new function, which will take uh, some number n that will parameterize this by how many indices are initially defined and initial value. And so the new function that will create a function that models an array. There'll be a bounds check. It'll either return the default value or throw a runtime error if we try calling this code out of bounds. Now, the advantage of refinement type systems is that we can write a refined type 
for the get function that accesses elements of the array by calling the function underlying it. And we can prove at compile time that with valid code, the runtime error out of bounds is never thrown. And so for this, we have a precondition on the get function that the index we call at has to actually be in the valid range that's defined. So with that, we can take an array, for instance, consider an array of length 10. It doesn't particularly matter what value we put in there. And then we can see that a good line of code, get 10.4, will call uh, index number 4. And that should be OK. Our system should be able to verify that that won't cause any trouble. And then a bad call to get, say, the 42nd index, that should be rejected at compile time. So now how do we know that we can actually verify this, what goes on? So when we call the get function with a valid index, that creates a subtyping obligation because we'll have one refinement type in our system for our argument that might be pretty precise. And the function's parameter, the precondition, will require a different refinement type. So in other words, when we call it on four, we know that four has the type of values that are equal to four. And we need to know that this implies that the argument is between zero and 10. So there's no exact syntactic way it to handle this in our system, but this is a simple semantic obligation. So to give you a flavor of the judgments, we'll show uh, part of the typing tree wherein we derive the type of get 10.4. And the way this works is that we start at the bottom of the tree and we work upwards. And so now we can use the function application role and then when we get to the type of an argument here, we use our subsumption role to generate subtyping obligations. So this shows the subtyping that we have to check. And in our system, although the general system isn't syntax directed, the subtyping rules that will be used in checking code are syntax directed. And so we can unfold these subtyping judgments and generate uh, semantic obligations or verification conditions. Here, for instance, checking the call reduces to checking the validity that for every V, if V is equal to four, then V must be less than 10. And that can be handled automatically by an SMT solver. So the first challenge we come into here is that our subsumption role, a new type is introduced on the bottom, and so we have to know it's well formed, that our refinements are actually valid Boolean program expressions, and so there has to be some kind of type checking. But if we use the actual type checking of our system, then we have the circularity that our typing judgment depends on the subtyping, which then in turn we have typing again and well formedness, and then we get a circularity here. And now this doesn't necessarily uh, preclude a proof for our system or another system, but it becomes much more complex. All of our theorems would be mutually recursive on subtyping, typing, and well-formedness instead of the usual development where properties of simpler judgments like well-formedness can be proven independently, and that can help in the proof for lemmas like the substitution lemma for typing and subtyping. But another more serious circularity uh, comes up when we formalize implication. So when we have an actual judgment that describes the implication of two refinements, then in terms of validating that these are well-formed refinements or defining our denotations, if we allow the typing judgment in here, we can actually get non-monotonic judgments in our system and it would could cease to be well-defined whatsoever. So because of that, it's important that we break the circularities. And so in our approach, we stratified our calculus into two layers. There's the full refined system, lambda RF, and we also have a unrefined lambda F, which is analogous to system F with features from our language. And lambda F type checking happens 
only with respect to unrefined base types, and that means we can check that our refinements are Boolean typed expressions without using the full lambda RF, and thus we break out of the circularity. And speaking of these implications, it's a challenge to encode implication in our system. Typical approaches to formalizing refinement types when there are implications to encode, either an axiomatization is given, uh, an SMT oracle is used, that's something that cannot be fully mechanized, or an approach like type denotations is used as well. That can be mechanized, but it can't be implemented because denotations are typically undecidable. For our approach, the direction we took was somewhat of a hybrid direction. We formalized exactly the properties that are needed of our refinement implication relationship. Then we were able to supply a mechanization of a denotations-based proof of the soundness of our implication. And we also were able to leave a neat interface where in the future we could encode other decidable implementations, for instance, trying to formalize an SMT solver. Our final challenge relates to the difficulty of polymorphism. The issue here is that when we have refined parametric polymorphic functions, a naive approach to instantiating our type variables can lead to losing contradictory refinements. And by losing contradictory refinements, if we lose information, our system can become unsound. Consider, for example, a refined type for the max function that just says the output is at least as large as both of the inputs. So what would we do if we tried to instantiate this, fun this function max on an argument that was a function type? The issue here is that our system doesn't directly support refinements of functions. So one choice would be that, well, let's not allow refinements on parametric polymorphic functions, but then we would lose expressiveness and have no ability to write this function here. Alternatively, whenever we instantiate by a function, we could just choose to drop the refinement because we can't compare functions. And the issue with that is that we can lose important information and lose soundness. Our approach here instead was to introduce a simple kind system that'll separate type variables into two classes, those that can be refined and those that can't. So we have a base kind and a star kind, and a base kind is used for type variables that can be instantiated by types with refinements. Those are our underlying base types, as well as existentials. And a star kind that includes all of the above, as well as the dependent function types, the polymorphic types, are the things that we don't refine in our system. We then alter our syntax slightly to include explicit quantifiers in all of our parametric polymorphic functions. And so, for instance, here, max has an explicit quantifier that binds the type variable A to the domain of base kind. And finally, I'll tell you a bit about our mechanization. The goal of this was to prove both type safety and also the soundness of implication, which reduces to the soundness of the denotational semantics. We have details on these theorems in the paper. What this says is the standard type safety that all well-typed terms continue stepping to a value, otherwise they don't get stuck. And the denotational soundness says that for every well-typed term, every valid interpretation, then that substitution, the interpretation of the expression, reduces to something in the denotation. Initially, we used liquid Haskell to mechanize our proof, and we, we defined the denotations, but that required negative occurrence in the inductive data type. And so, unfortunately, our proof was rejected the first time, but thanks to the help of the anonymous referees pointing this out, we were able to implement a positivity checker in liquid Haskell so that we could avoid this since it turned out to be a source of unsoundness. So it's not possible currently to encode denotations in liquid Haskell, but we were able to mechanize these in Coq using the equations library. So we have two mechanizations, 
Liquid Haskell has type safety, cock type safety, and denotations. And ultimately, we found that this was work worth doing. Liquid Haskell can scale up to large proofs, and we were able to uh, patch a source of unsoundness with a positivity checker. The paper has more details on the implementation and the system. So in conclusion, we present to you our calculus Lambda RF, and in the future, we'd be interested in extending this with the rest of the GHC primitives, such as data types, literals, and casts. Thank you. Okay, thank you for what looks like a very interesting verification journey. Uh, questions? Yes, please. Uh, thank you for the talk. I have two questions. One is uh, uh, two slides back or so. You said that uh, um, you use equations to work around an issue with the positivity checker. I don't really understand this. In which way those equations have something to do with the positivity checker? Uh, the, the issue is that something like the denotations, also it comes up if you're trying to encode certain logical relations. These things, if they were formalized as an inductive data type, would require negative occurrences. In COC, instead, you can define a fixed point that's prop valued. You lose decidability. And then the equations library, which uh, was released in the last few years for COC, helps with the non-structural termination requirements and the rewrites necessary to handle a proof of this size efficiently. Okay, I see. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, my second question is, can you go to your type of max? I don't really understand this, because uh, you are quantifying over x of being type A, where A is some base type. Uh, but now A, I might very well instantiate it with a string or a tuple. And how does the inequality make sense on anything that is not, an, not a number type? Uh, currently, our calculus has Booleans and integers as base types. We've defined the comparison relation on Booleans. But to expand to things like strings that are not or something that's not necessarily comparable, we would need type classes instead of kinds. And so first, we have to formalize data types in order to be able to do something like type classes. Uh, okay, so the type of max would become more involved if you would uh, uh, have a more expansive tap, uh, type system. So then it would become uh, like in Haskell, uh, where you have something like for all a of type b, uh, for all uh, uh, a of type b with ORT a to something or so. Right. Yeah, that's the direction we'd like to go in the future. Okay, makes also sense. Thanks. All right. Thank you. So uh, we have a question from uh, Discord. Uh, uh, breaking circularity on breaking circularity. Can the subtyping judgment be reformulated to assume that its inputs are well formed instead of checking it in the premises? Uh, in the subtyping judgment, we do make the proof more efficient by assuming that the types here are well formed. That kind of check doesn't happen in the subtyping judgment, but rather it's in the subsumption rule that the type we need, for the new type being introduced, we need to know the well-formedness here. And for this uh, circularity, it's not directly in the well-formedness. We can assume the refinements are well-formed, but to fully formalize implications, our approach of denotations required uh, some kind of quantification over, t in the denotations, you have some kind of quantification over terms that have a specific type, and then quantifying over the typing judgment would be a negative occurrence. And so this breaking circularities is also motivated by our desire to formalize the denotations. OK, a very quick uh, yes, no, or maybe question. <laughs> uh, OK, I, don't, I only have a why question, sorry. <laughs> so, so I was just wondering why system FR does not uh, require coercions? according to, in your terminology? Why system FR doesn't require? Why does it require coercions? That's what you pointed out is one difference. Uh, for system FR, I believe the, the subtyping relation was uh, semantic. So yes. there's uh, limits on the kinds of subtyping that can be expressed. In particular, our 
uh, function subtyping rule has covariant and contra contravariant parts, so we can express a subtyping relation in the function domain. So uh, yeah. my current understanding of system FR was that the subtyping relation might not quite be that versatile because it's syntax-based. It's a set of terms, but anyway, it's, it has contravariance. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Let's thank the speaker again. Mm -hmm.